let's scale things down a bit. Hey Power Director peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love from Power Director University. Have you ever had a PIP window on the screen and you wanted to animate it, meaning you wanted to make it go from small to large and take up the whole screen or maybe you wanted to start off with a full screen and then make that PIP window shrink down to a small window somewhere on the screen. Well guess what? I'm going to show you how to do that, all right? So, let's jump off into Power Director and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 15 Ultimate. So, I have two clips in the timeline. The first clip is a picture of guys on bikes, and then the second clip is a guy, uh, I guess, being pulled by a boat on some type of board or whatever. So, right now, in the preview window, all you can see is the track that's on the bottom which is the guy, I guess, kite surfing. If I were to move the clip above it so that it wasn't covered by the other clip, you'll see that it's the people on the bike. So the people on the bike is my background and the kite surfing one, the one on track two, is what I'm going to create the PIP window for. Remember when you're creating and using PIP, the track underneath is always the one that's gonna show on top of the other video. So what I'm gonna do now is click on the kite surfing clip. I'm gonna go up to designer and I'm gonna click on that. And then I'm gonna click on PIP designer. So what I wanna do is create motion. And in order to create motion and move things around, I need to use keyframes. So the two parameters I'm gonna use for this video are position and scale. So for the first zoom or scale that I'm gonna do, I'm going to start off with the kite surfing clip full screen, and I'm gonna animate it to make it shrink down to a small PIP window somewhere else on the screen. So the first thing I need to do is create a keyframe for where it's full screen. So I'm gonna click on the add a keyframe button for position. And then I'm gonna click on the add a keyframe button for scale. Now you can see it added two keyframes to this timeline here. And they're both here in red all the way over to the left. So what this means is that wherever this clip is, this is the position and the scale of this clip and this is what it's gonna stay until I add a new parameter for a different scale and position. So I'm going to left click on the playhead and I'm gonna hold it down and move it to a new position. Now, depending on how far out you move your playhead, if I move my playhead way out here and add my next keyframe here, it's gonna take longer and it's gonna be slower because there's more space between keyframes. If I move my playhead somewhere here and add a keyframe, then it's gonna happen faster and it's going to happen sooner because the playhead is closer and the keyframes are closer together. So I'm gonna place my playhead here. And now I'm going to add a new position keyframe. I'm gonna add a new scale keyframe. And now what I'm gonna do is place my cursor over one of these nodes and I'm going to hold down my left mouse once I see that the cursor has changed from a crosshairs to two diagonal arrows. And with my left mouse held down, I'm gonna drag this down to a different size. And now I'm going to move my playhead till I see the crosshairs again, and I'm going to left click, hold down my left mouse button and move the PIP window to wherever I want it. So what that means is that at this position where my playhead is, where these keyframes are, the video is gonna be this size and at this position. So here on the first keyframe, if I move this back, you'll see it's full screen. 
And as I move my playhead forward and it gets to the next keyframe, it's now that new side that I created there. And so what you can do now, you'll see that it stays this size the rest of the video. If you want to, you can place another position keyframe and another scale keyframe at the end of the clip just to make sure that it stays at the same position from this keyframe position to this keyframe position. You don't want it to move in any way, so that's a good practice to make sure that your last keyframe matches the keyframe before it if you want it to stay that size and at that position for the whole time. So a few other things I want to do is I'm going to move my playhead back to the first set of keyframes. And you'll notice here that Ease Out is now active. Before when we had our playhead here, Ease Out was not active for the position or the scale. The reason why is because there were no keyframes after it to ease out of the first keyframe into the next one. So I'm going to click on ease out for position and scale. What this does is it ramps up into the move, basically starts off a little slower and then speeds up. And so if I go to the next keyframe and I can click on the select next keyframe button, then I can say, hey, I want to ease into this position or ease into this keyframe so that it's not a jarring quick stop. It kind of smoothly eases into it. So I'm going to click on ease in for position. And I'm going to click on ease in for scale. And I'm going to leave that like that. So now if I preview this by pressing play, You see that it goes from full screen to a small PIP screen. And you can do the same exact thing for the other way. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to hit stop because once you hit play, you have to hit stop so that you can activate changes again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on this keyframe and I'm going to do duplicate next keyframe. That's going to do is change it to the position of this keyframe. Then I'll do the same thing with scale. I'm going to right click on it and do duplicate next keyframe. And so now you'll see that they start off as a PIP screen, right? And it stays that way. And I'm going to go to this last keyframe and now I'm going to make this full size. So basically you could do the opposite to create a PIP to a full screen. So now you'll see that and let's move this over a little bit here. And so now what you'll see is it's starting off as a PIP. And then when I hit this keyframe, it's going to start to go back to full screen. So now I'll hit play. There, and then when it hits this middle keyframe, it's going to start to scale back up. And then based on however you wanted to do it, if you're zooming in or scaling up or you're zooming out or scaling down, once you're done, whichever one you're doing, you just hit OK. And you're all set, people. PIP zoom or PIP scaling. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, Power Director peeps. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. Truly means the world to me. If you like the content in this video, click on the thumb that's pointed in the upward direction. It lets other people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch this video too. If you got any questions, you want to leave a comment, 
uh, you got any tutorial requests, or you just want to chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get back with you. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. When you smash the subscribe button, you receive a notification from YouTube letting you know whenever I upload content. And that way, you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.